do yourself a favor and throw on that banger by Andy Williams because it's the most wonderful time of the year, and I'm not talking about Christmas. First mock draft of the year. I'm really excited to bring this mock draft to you guys because um, this is my favorite time of the year, basically the all- the mock draft season and the draft season in general, the NFL draft is probably my favorite day of the year, even over Christmas and Thanksgiving, all this good stuff, because it's just so much fun. There's so much excitement. Um, this year, I'm going to be a little more honest about my quarterback takes, uh, just particularly with how the media perceived the prospects last year and only one went in with the first two rounds. Um, so with this year, uh, I just want to put this out there in the beginning. If I was the general manager, there's probably not a quarterback prospect I'm in love with. I think that the next year's class is much stronger with Caleb Williams and Drake May. But if I had to take a quarterback this year, the prospect I would probably gamble on is Anthony Richardson, but it would also depend on my coaching staff if I was general manager. But with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to this mock draft. Um, it's super excited. Uh, and uh, with the first pick, like I said, I wouldn't take a quarterback in this class, if I was the Texans, I'd probably punt for one more year, take the best player available, and just try to get Caleb Williams next year. You have the draft picks to move up. You have the capital to move around the draft board. You have the capital to pretty much do whatever you want. And I think that aside from the upside of Richardson, Caleb Williams and Drake May will be better than C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, um, and definitely Will Levis. But with this pick, we're going to take Bryce Young. I think that that's the way that the board is trending just because I definitely think the Texans are in search for a quarterback to replace Deshaun Watson. I honestly don't know if they end up going Bryce Young. I I think there is a very real possibility that everybody's kind of sleeping on about Will Levis being the first quarterback off the board. Now, I think that would open up a scenario where the Texans trade back. If they really want Levis, I don't think they're going to use the first overall pick on him, but who knows? And then at pick two, I'm going to go with Jalen Carter. The Seahawks have this pick from, um, their trade for Russell Wilson, they're trading Russell Wilson. And the reason I'm taking Jalen Carter is because I think that this is an absolutely loaded edge class. Um, and Jalen Carter has been drawing comparisons to Aaron Donald. And I really hate comparisons because a lot of times they just compare the pro- the best prospect of the position to the best, most recent up- like developed player in the NFL. Like uh, last year, Malik Willis was drawing comparisons to Josh Allen, which was absolutely insane by Kyle Brandt on uh, Good Morning uh, football. Uh, but at pick three, I think this is definitely a pick that's going to get traded, but we're not going to do trades in this mock draft video. I think that with Stroud and Levis being on the board and being that the uh, Panthers are winning games now, um, they're subject to move up. The Colts are subject to move up. But with Anderson here, and we're not planning on moving back, I think that Anderson is definitely the pick. Um, I think that this is a scenario where the Bears definitely could trade back and look to fill out that offensive line or get a a weapon for uh, Justin Fields because God knows he needs it. Um, Darnell Mooney's just, he's a good two, good three. I'm not going to say three because he's definitely better than a three, but he's a very good two. Um, Chase Claypool is also a two. I think they, like, them trading back with, let's just say, the Raiders if they decide to move off from Derek Carr and taking Quentin Johnston, who could be that alpha one. I think that's a very good move. You're probably going to get another first round pick um, and some mid round picks. But uh, at pick four, we have the Lions. And I see a lot of people in their mock drafts um, and just in general saying that this is, needs to be a quarterback. Uh, I think that, and, I, and I'm saying this not in spite of what happened this past weekend against uh, in the Vikings uh, Lions game. I just think that paying Jared Goff is not an issue. Like, I think that you're definitely overpaying him, but keep in mind, the Lions did have the first-ranked offense for a large portion of this season. The offense isn't the problem, and sure, the argument is valid of you could use that money to allocate resources to the defense, but you have two first-round picks. You're picking at four, and you're picking at 15. At the current moment, picking at four, courtesy of the Rams trade uh, with Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff, but it really doesn't make sense to take a quarterback here And I actually, like, I'm very hard on C.J. Stroud, but I think that if you put him on the Lions, the way that they've built this offense, he'll actually be, like, a lot better than if he goes to, like, Seattle or the Colts, not Seattle, but the Colts or the Raiders. I think that'll actually be a really good landing spot. I think C.J. Stroud, 
His ideal landing spot would have been the 49ers. If the 49ers had traded up for Stroud instead of Lance, I think that Stroud would actually be a very good quarterback in the NFL because he is someone who functions well inside of structure. He has the prototypical frame. He has the prototypical size. He has incredible accuracy. Uh, you kind of could question some of his processing um, and definitely does not, at least in my opinion, he really lacks that improviser uh, capability that a lot of quarterbacks need to succeed in the NFL today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take the best edge rusher, in my opinion, on the board, which is Miles Murphy. I think Miles Murphy has a tremendous amount of upside. I think that he definitely can be, um, I, th I don't think he'll be better than Will Anderson, but I think he could definitely separate himself from the rest of the edge rushers in this class. I think he's just got great explosiveness, um, great build, uh, very dynamic player. And then Philly at five, this is courtesy of the Saints trade. Uh, I think this is an interesting pick because the Eagles really can do so many things here. They could take a corner. Um, Darius Slay is getting older. James Bradbury's on a one-year deal. Uh, I think that they actually can do anything with this pick, and they probably wouldn't be wrong. Um, but I think that getting a top-tier edge rusher to round out your defense, um, you could also argue that they could get a replacement on the interior of the D-line. But I think that the rushing stats are kind of inflated because they didn't have Jordan Davis for a large portion of the year. And yards per carry against the Eagles with Jordan Davis and without Jordan Davis is like night and day. So... I really don't think their interior is that bad. Fletcher Cox is definitely getting older, but um, I'm going to go with an edge rusher here, and I'm going to take Tyree Wilson out of uh, Texas Tech. This is someone who's flying up draft boards, and I think that with him, we're kind of seeing a very similar run uh, to Trayvon Walker. Like, Trayvon Walker went from being a first-rounder to being the number one overall pick very quickly. Um, Tyree Wilson, I believe, is 6'7". He's just a mammoth of a human being. And I think that with what the Eagles have in terms of depth, they don't have to start him right away. Like, they don't have to put him in a position to be this elite dominant player that he probably will develop into. Um, so I think that that's a very good pick for the Eagles. And we'll see what they can do, you know, with their second pick who's on the board. But um, with the Cardinals at six, I had the thought yesterday, which was so weird because I was prepping for this video. And I think a lot of people forget how dysfunctional the Cardinals have been before and since Kurt Warner. Um, played there and they went to the Super Bowl that year. The only thing this team has done right in the past, as long as I can remember, is moving off of Josh Rosen for Kyler Murray a year after drafting Josh Rosen, and that's it. Like, the Cardinals are getting ready to fire a coach they just extended. Their owner hates their quarterback who they just extended. It would not shock me, and I, I'm, I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but it would not shock me if the Cardinals decided to blow it up. Because I do think Cliff Kingsbury gets fired at the end of the year. You could trade Kyler Murray for a King's Ransom and just start over. Get a head coach, get a ton of first-round picks over the next few years, get a ton of picks this year, move off of Kyler, who you don't... He definitely loses some value because of the ACL tear, which unfortunately just happened. Um, but that's a hot take I have. That's not what we're going to do in this video. I just have a, I, That popped into my head yesterday. And then Kyler got hurt when I, and then I really thought it started to become a reality. Um, potentially, 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 potentially. Uh, but at this pick, we're going to take Joey Porter Jr. I think that there is a scenario where Joey Porter Jr. is the well, most well balanced corner out of like Brett coming into the league. He plays a good deal of man coverage, he plays a good deal of press coverage. He's not as good in man as Christian Gonzalez, for example. But being that we don't know what this. Cardinals team is going to look like in a year I think that getting a cornerstone secondary piece that is pretty versatile is not a bad idea I also thought about the idea of going um uh with a tackle perhaps Paris Johnson or Broderick Jones or taking an edge rusher but I just really don't like the edge rushers we still have on the board um so at pick seven I think this is a really interesting pick because of Jim Ursay. It's really going to depend because I think he's going to hire a new head coach and I don't think he's going to care who the head coach wants at quarterback. I think it's going to be who Jim Ursay wants at quarterback. And I'm predicating this based off of the history of moving off of Matt uh, Carson Wentz. Jim Ursay did not want Carson Wentz anymore. 
he wanted Matt Ryan, so he moved the team off of Carson Wentz and got Matt Ryan. He did not want Frank Reich anymore, so he moved the team off of Frank Reich onto Jeff Saturday. Like, Jim Irsay is going to do what Jim Irsay wants. So I think that that puts Anthony Richardson in play at seven because his upside is, like, completely undeniable. If you can develop him the right way, he is a player that, like, I think that the Josh Allen comparison is is legit based off of, if you look at their college stats as well. I really wish that Anthony Richardson went back to school for just one more year because right now he's valued as a potential first round pick in some circles that I was reading about. Um, he could be a second or third rounder because he's just so like such an inconsistent passer. Like you can't deny the flashes, but he's such an inconsistent passer. If he would have just gone back to school and stayed in the system for one more year and maybe just started completing just 62 or 60% of his passes, he's a top five pick. Like that's just, that is the reality of Anthony Richardson. So I'm not going to take him here, but that is the frustration I have with Anthony Richardson because it's undeniable what he could be, but because he's coming out a year earlier than I think he should, he's hurting himself. And now potentially he could, he, he might be benefiting himself because he could just suck next year and completely fall out of the first round but i don't think that that would be the case i think that he should have definitely stayed for another year um so with all that being said we're gonna take will levis i think that jim ursay is someone who's gonna bank on the traits rather than the prospect and i think he's gonna, gonna want a, a, a potential athlete like will levis who has a absolute rocket launcher of an arm um i don't like will levis personally i think that he's not set up for failure but i just think that he's very overrated um, I think the majority of this class is overrated. Uh, the main concern I have with Bryce Young is actually nothing to do with him as a prospect. I think he's a beautiful throwing motion, beautiful ball placement. He has good mobility. He has good uh, improv improvisation. The issue I have with Bryce Young, and I guess I should have said this when I was making the Texans pick, but I hold my breath when Tua gets tackled. Like, if Bryce Young is 20 pounds lighter and potentially 30 pounds lighter because I've been also reading reports that he's smaller than he's listed at, I just think that there is a very, very big durability concern. A very big durability concern. And I also think that he's a player that is going to be a complete outlier if he succeeds. So that's my concern with Bryce Young. And I think Will Levis... Though he's not as polished, I think you could definitely make the argument he's a more prototypical prospect, I guess, with a massive arm. I've been reading also, like, that's a player who gets Josh Allen comparisons, and that's just completely outlandish. Like, that's so dumb, in my opinion. I think an accurate comparison for Will Levis, and I'll put this on the record here, uh, is Carson Wentz. I think that he is the same type of player Carson Wentz was when he was coming out of North Dakota State. Big, mobile huge arm but reckless like and that's the same thing that has carried Carson Wentz followed Carson Wentz throughout his whole career is his recklessness and I think the same thing is going to happen with Will Levis is his it's going to really come down to that coaching staff to train the recklessness out of him which I'm not sure I think is very much so easier said than done um but the Raiders at pick eight uh I think this has to be defense. Absolutely has to be defense. They get zero, especially up front. Like, they get zero pressure outside of Max Crosby. I would definitely hear the argument of C.J. Stroud. And I think C.J. Stroud could be a good fit for a Josh McDaniels offense because of what he was able to do with a system quarterback in Mac Jones. I think that C.J. Stroud is just a potentially bigger version of Mac Jones. Um, I just don't think the team is ready for that yet. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Derek Carr. So at the moment, we're going to fix up this defensive line, particularly on the interior. We're going to take Brian Brazee. Um, Brian Brazee, if, you, if you're someone who just reads stats, like Brian Brazee was someone who does not have the best stats because he didn't play that much this year. He, His sister, I think, I, I'm not sure if she had cancer, but she definitely passed away. So my condolences to the Brazee family. Um, but came back and had a banger championship game um he is a very good athlete like he's a, a top d-line prospect and he's not on jalen carter's level but he's very very good um and then with carolina at nine i don't know if this board is completely updated from this past week and i think carolina is picking around 11 now because they beat um the seahawks 
And there is a huge question mark at quarterback, and it's going to really depend on who, what the coach coming in wants to do. Um, and I also think it kind of depends on how Darnold finishes this year. If Darnold can take this team to the playoffs, there's definitely an argument they sign him to a one-year or two-year to be their bridge quarterback, or perhaps go get Jacoby Brissett to be their bridge quarterback. I don't think they have to force the QB pick this year, and I also will make the argument again, their defense is very good, and you should not ever force a quarterback pick just because you need a quarterback. Just because you're picking in the top 10 does not mean the quarterback prospect you pick will be a franchise quarterback. Like, that's so, such just not sound logic at all. Um, so, I kind of want to go offense here and just kind of put quarterback on the back burner for now uh, and maybe see what happens. You could implode next year, and that just gives you a better chance of taking Caleb Williams, who I think is unquestionably a franchise quarterback. I also think I'm very curious to see what Drake May does next year because I think he's also going to be a very, like another franchise quarterback. He reminds me a lot at the moment of um, Justin Herbert. Uh, and I'm not saying his comp is Justin Herbert. We'll save that for next year. But just watching how he plays, that's kind of what I see. Um, but with this pick, I'm going to go ahead and actually take Quentin Johnston. Um, I think that you get DJ Moore, you get Quentin Johnson, you continue to round out the, the roster while you're in limbo. You still have to get a new head coach. Who knows if you're going to bring back your interim coach, whose name I'm completely forgetting at the moment. And if that's the case, like this kid's going to come into a team with DJ Moore, Quentin Johnston, Terrace Marshall, uh, a more built out, developed offensive line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take Quentin Johnston because I think he's one of the only players that will probably end up being a wide receiver uh, like an alpha wide receiver one from this class. I don't. Th I think this is actually a pretty poor wide receiver class for the first round. I think there's some pretty interesting sleepers in the second. Um, both Atlanta at pick 10. Um, I think that CJ Stroud is in play, but I also think CJ Stroud would get absolutely ruined by um, the Falcons because they're just not ready for um, a quarterback. So I'm going to go ahead and take Peter Skronsky. I think that the worry with Peter Skronsky is definitely his length, um, which also was a concern with Rashawn Slater, and we know he turned out, um, who also came out of Northwestern, ironically. But I think that if you – like the the Falcons are set at tackle, to my knowledge. And if I get anything wrong about your team, please go ahead and correct me. Like, you won't hurt my feelings. Um I think that with Peter Skronsky, you could start him out at guard and replace uh, Colby Gassett, uh, which wouldn't be a bad move. And Skronsky could play anywhere on the offensive line, and he definitely, I think, will be a fine tackle at the next level. So you can see what happens with him. Um, but at pick 11, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I'm going to go ahead and take um, Broderick Jones. I think Broderick Jones is more NFL-ready than... Paris Johnson, and I also think he's a better athlete than Paris Johnson. Um, and I just really, I'm taking offensive line for the Jaguars because Cam Robinson is going, like, he needs to be replaced. You can't franchise tag him again. And I just think that, like, this is a completely fine opportunity to fix the offensive line and make sure that that's not a reason Trevor Lawrence fails in 2023. Like, don't. Like, he's, he's dealing with weapons he's got right now, and you still have Galvin, Calvin Ridley, like, on the way. Like, I think that just fix the line, make sure that the tackles are fine, and, like, let Trevor continue to develop with Doug Peterson. He's mobile enough. He doesn't need a perfect offensive line, but don't let it be as abysmal as it could possibly be. Um, with the Texans at pick 12, I actually kind of just changed the way I did this draft with the... Um, Panthers pick because I had them going CJ Stroud and I talked myself out of it. Uh, so I pick a uh, 12. This would have been uh, in my in my brain. It would have been Quentin Johnston, but now at pick 12, I think this is actually not a bad spot to potentially take Christian Gonzalez, being with how bad the secondary is in Houston. Um, oh, it's tough now. I think you could definitely. There's definitely an argument to be made to make be made for Jordan Addison. Um, and I also really like the idea of Michael Mayer here at pick 12, only because, like, you have a rookie quarterback, and rookie quarterbacks rely pretty heavily on tight ends, and Jordan Akins just is not that good of a tight end, in my opinion. I think he's pretty bad. Um, you have John Mechie coming back as well, who's a great fit for Bryce Young. 
Um, I think, I'm pretty sure John Mechie's coming back. That's what I've been reading. Who will take the role of slot receiver. Um, you're going to move off Brandon Cooks. So, you know what? Let's let's go ahead. Well, it's tough to take Jordan, Jordan Addison because he plays mostly in the slot. And I could definitely hear the argument for Jackson Smith and Jigba, but he also plays majority from the slot. The thing with him is it's his flexibility completely, like in terms of where he's going to line up, completely depends on how he tests. Because if he's athletic and explosive enough to line up on the outside, then yeah, pick, take him at pick 12. His stock's going to go through the roof. But if he tests out pretty average, I think you have to keep him in the slot. He's also a great run blocker, which is good for Damian Pierce. But... Ah, it's a tough pick. I think... I don't want to take Michael Mayer. I think we're just going to take... We're going to take Christian Gonzalez. No, we can't. Let's go ahead and take... Um, uh, let's go ahead and take Jordan Addison. I think that it's just... A, it's too it's too rich to pass up. He's, he's going to add value no matter what you do. Um, and there's no certainty with John Matchy and what he looks like when he comes back. Um, but I picked 13... We got the Pittsburgh Steelers, and here we are going to take offensive tackle. You can definitely make the argument for corner, but we're going to take Paris Johnson. You have to develop Kenny Pickett. You have to see what you have in Kenny Pickett. Um, so we're going to continue to let Kenny Pickett. We're going to give Kenny Pickett everything he needs to succeed. He has the receivers. He has the running back. Now let's fix his offensive line. Make sure that that's not a reason why he fails. I think that's just a very easy way to set your quarterback up for fa for success, and a lot of teams ignore it, which sets their quarterback up for failure and really stunts their development. But um, at pick 14, we have the Packers, and everybody in like everybody on the planet knows that this should be wide receiver. But I made the joke right before the draft last year when the Packers had two first round picks of like watch them not draft the quarterback this year, and they didn't draft the quarterback. Th I'm sorry, not a quarterback, a receiver this year in the first round. So we're gonna go ahead and take. Uh, an offensive weapon, it's just not going to be a receiver. It's going to be Michael Mayer, who's going to replace Robert Tunyon. Um, I think it would be interesting, though, with Stroud on the board. They could definitely take Stroud here. Um, and then at pick 15, I think with how competitive the Lions have been, get someone who could play press man corner at a very, very high level, um, and that's Christian Gonzalez. So we're going to take Christian Gonzalez to fix up the defense. At pick 16, we got the Chargers, and I think that it's – an interesting idea here is I like the, like I like the idea of B. John Robinson here. And the reason being is he has a very similar skill set to um Austin Eckler. He's just a better athlete. He's a, a phenomenal pass catcher. He he also can run with power. Um, it adds a whole new layer to this offense that, you know, you have with Eckler, but how much longer can Eckler continue to produce like this? But I think it would kind of be neglectful to not take an offensive lineman here, whether that's Osiris Torrance or, uh, or a wide receiver. Um, but they really need that, that that receiver that could take the top off of defense, and I think that's Jalen Hyatt. It's just way too early, in my opinion, to draft Jalen Hyatt. Um, so I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna take Bijan Robinson here. And Chargers fans, you can let me know if you hate this pick, but I think it's. I don't think it's that terrible pick. I think it's. I think it's pretty solid. And it kind. Of, I don't know how much longer Austin Eckler has on his contract, um, but that's a, a seamless replacement for him, who's also just a better athlete. Anyway, um, it kind of adds another layer of. of to the run game on this offense. You could also make the argument for tackle. Um, and then I pick 17. You have the uh, Seahawks. And I would like to take an edge rusher here. And I think that you could definitely go with uh, Jared Verse here. Just a very explosive athlete. He's flown up draft boards. I think he was actually mocked or pro projected like day three pick. Like a late day three pick. And now he's a first rounder. Um, so... Very interesting to see him fly out the boards. The Seahawks are now kind of rounding out their defense. You can make the argument that they go with uh, Trenton Simpson here instead. But we went with Verse. And then at pick 18, we have the Jets. And unironically, CJ, CJ Stroud is here. And I think he might actually be a very solid fit for the Jets. They need to replace Zach Wilson. They need to replace, uh, uh, what's his face, Mike White. And if you follow this channel, like you knew, like you know. If you were here during the podcast days, which are coming back, 
that I either said to keep Darnold and just draft Jamar Chase or Penny Swell or just draft Justin Fields if you're hell-bent on taking quarterback. They didn't either. They took Zach Wilson, who I very much so knew was going to be a bust. And it's well-documented. Um, and I think with within this system, being that he also has the familiarity with Garrett Wilson here, C.J. Stroud is actually a very sexy pick for the Jets. Um, and I think that this is a system with a very good offensive line that's completely decimated by injury this year. Um, but if, if the Niners are building their team like the 40, I'm sorry, the Jets are building their team like the 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo isn't the most dynamic quarterback in the world. He just is very accurate, distributes the ball as he needs to, or as he's supposed to, and plays within the system. And I think that with what the Jets have done with their offensive line, with their run game, with the weapons they've put around their quarterback... This is a situation where C.J. Stroud definitely could succeed. If he goes to, like, the Colts, like I mentioned before, it's going to be a disaster. Now, that's not on him, but I think that the Jets are definitely actually in play for Stroud um, or a quarterback. I think Anthony Richardson could definitely be in play. I just think C.J. Stroud's a very good pick or a very good fit for the Jets at pick 18. And at pick 19, in my brain, Tom Brady is not coming back to the Buccaneers. I'm not saying he's retiring, but he's not coming back to the Buccaneers. So... You either roll the dice with Trask, or you could take a more dynamic player in Anthony Richardson. But again, it begs the question of what do the NFL, what does the NFL actually think of Anthony Richardson, and what does the what do the Tampa Bay Buccaneers completely look like next year? Because they could be in a complete overhaul and just use Kyle Trask as their bridge quarterback. In which case, I would advocate to take the best player available, which would be a, a corner or edge rusher or receiver or etc. Um, definitely need to work on the offensive line because it just got decimated by injuries. But I think that with Anthony Richardson's upside, you have to you have to gamble on it. Especially if somehow in the offseason you could convince Tom Brady to stay for another year, then it's even better to take Richardson here. Um, but it'll be inter- it'll be really in- like Anthony Richardson is a, is a prospect. I'm very curious to see what happens with him. Um, I think there's a very real scenario where he goes to Washington, Ron Rivera gets Cam Newton 2.0, or he goes to the Giants and Brian Dayball tries to turn him into Josh Allen, um, which I mentioned at the beginning. I do see the Josh Allen com- Allen comparisons. Um, I just don't know if Anthony Richardson could turn into Josh Allen, um, being with what Josh Allen has become in terms of accuracy. I don't know. I think that's making a quarterback more accurate is way easier said than done. Um, so we're going to take Anthony Richardson to the Bucks. I think that with how things stand at the moment, it's a very good pick. Um, and I think that they definitely, with Brady, if they could somehow convince Brady, or just keep him behind Trask draft and, or, and get a new uh, head coach, have Richardson sit behind Trask for a year, watch the system, see what happens, see as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers try to rebuild their team. With Richardson kind of observing, I think it's going to set him up for a lot of success in the NFL. Um, cause I think he's a, he is the prospect where his landing spot matters more than any other prospect in, in this draft. Um, at pick 20, we have the Titans and I think that with this pick, like with how anemic this wide receiver core is, you have to take Jackson Smith and Jigba. But I also hear the argument of Derek Henry's the engine of this offense. We need to give him, we need to put him in the best possible scenario to succeed. So let's take a lineman or Caleb Farley, isn't it? And his back is broken. So let's just take Kaylee Ring- Keely Ringo because he's an incredible prospect and should not have fallen this far. But we're going to take Jackson Smith and Jigba because he plays out of slot. You have Traylon Burks, who's going to be your ex. And then Jackson Smith and Jigba is also a very, very, very good run blocker um, from the receiver position. So I really do like that fit for the Tennessee Titans. Um, and at pick 21, we have the uh, New England Patriots. I'd like to go receiver here. I'm pretty low on Josh Downs because of his size at only, I think he's only 5'9", um, or 5'10", maybe, but, he, th- like, Jacoby Myers is a free agent, so they're gonna need to replace the slot receiver, which is, you know, very important for Mac Jones to have that slot receiver. Keely Ringo, I feel like he can't pass here, um, but I also think Trenton Simpson is much, 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 much to play. Keely Ringo, I think you have to take him because I think Keely Ringo is also like a top 10 pick. I don't know how he fell down the board this far. Um, he definitely could be a top 10 pick. He's just so raw is a knock on him. He has the speed. He has the athleticism. He has the ball tracking skills. He's just so raw in coverage. 
Um, and I think that Bill Belichick would not hesitate to take the opportunity to try to mold that into a new J.C. Jackson or something along those lines. Um, at pick 17, or sorry, 22, we have the Washington Commanders. And I feel like with this pick, there's no quarterbacks worth taking. I also think they're in play for Jimmy Garoppolo, um, even though Jimmy Garoppolo might never... I don't know what's going to happen with Jimmy Garoppolo because of the foot injury. Uh, so I think the play here is either corner or it's got to be corner or um, lineman. I don't think you want to take Dewan, uh, Dewan Jones here or Anton Harris. Uh, I think I think you got to take Cam Smith. Like the, Washington needs a corner so bad. Um but anyway, at pick 23, we got the Giants. I think they're definitely in play for Trenton Simpson. But being that this team very much, very well could be bringing in a new quarterback or rolling it, rolling it, running it back with Daniel Jones, um, which I think they're going to do just based off of what I've been hearing and what I've been reading. Um, I think you have to get a receiver. Like, you have to get a receiver. You can't keep rolling out Isaiah Hodgins and Darius Slayton. Um, you also really need a corner. Like, a Dory Jackson went down and your team has fallen to shambles. You have no middle line. You, like you have no linebacker. Like this defense and receiving core is so anemic, and you also have no interior line. Um, you also might not have a running back, so I don't really know what the Giants have at this point. Um, but one player that I have been watching, and I think I am much higher on than a lot of people, and I think will definitely play himself into the first round when it's said and done. When it comes to testing in the combine. The knock on him is his age. He's 25. But I think that if the Giants are looking for a prototypical alpha wide receiver one in round one, it's Rashi Rice. I think that this kid is an unbelievable contested catcher. Um, he has a phenomenal release, great explosion off the line. The knocks on him are, can you expand his route tree? And I mean, he's 25. So those are the two knocks I could think of. I think other than that, he's got first round talent all over. Um, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna take Rashi Rice to the Giants. Um, but at pick 24, got the Denver Broncos, and we we're gonna take Isaiah Foskey to replace um, Bradley Chubb. I think that Foskey, someone like I mentioned before, or no, I'm sorry, Fos. I'm getting confused with Jared Verse. Foskey is a very high floor. Uh, he's kind of like. A bigger George Karloftis, like Karloftis was the high floor edge rusher of last year, and I think that with um, Foskey, he's kind of the same thing. Just a huge, big, pl like explosive athlete that could bend the edge pretty well. Um, but yeah, I think that Denver, Denver's, Denver's a curious spot. I think that's somewhere probably the ideal landing spot, in my opinion, for Anthony Richardson because not to tie it back to Anthony Richardson again. I think it's just so, he's such a fascinating case. Um, because of like you why I think Denver's the best spot is in, again to reiterate like in my opinion Richardson's a two-year investment so you're tied to Russell Wilson for at least two more two three more years you're gonna have to fire Hackett and you're gonna have to completely rebuild the offense Richardson is going to be there the entire time this happens and by the time oh we can move off Russell Wilson Anthony Richardson will be ready to play in the NFL, whether that's earlier than you expect or later than you expect, he's going to be ready and you're going to be able to move off of Russ. So I think Denver is the ideal landing spot for Anthony Richardson. It just really depends on like, do they get a, a coach who could develop him? And then I pick uh, 25, we have the Baltimore Ravens and I think they really need like kind of similar to the Chargers. They lack a field stretcher. They also kind of need a corner at this point. Um, But I, I, I think that it's kind of sad that an organization that is so well ran as the Baltimore Ravens have failed in one aspect by Lamar Jackson and not getting him a receiver one. I don't think Jalen Hyatt is that receiver one, but he does have great straight line speed. Um, he's a very explosive, dynamic player. I think you have to roll a dice on Jalen. Like, you can't roll out Demarcus Robinson again and... Uh, Rashad Bateman, if he plays... Like, Rashad Bateman, when he plays, is great, but, like, he never plays. Um, and Mark Andrews is getting up there in age. Thank God you have uh, Isaiah Likely. But, anyway, at pick 26, 
We're going to go ahead and take Brian Branch for the Cincinnati Bengals. I think this is your Jesse Bates replacement. Um, absolute tackling machine. Um, does pretty much everything well. Uh, very dynamic player. He could play out of the nickel. He could play deep. Um, and he just does not miss tackles. And then at pick 27, I think with Clark Phillips here on the board or Trenton Simpson, you have to address the defense. You could also, I definitely like the argument of letting Zeke and Pollard walk and just taking a running back and paying him for free, which enter Jameer Gibbs, but we're not going to do that. I think you definitely could address slot receiver and Josh Downs. Um, not a bad idea. Or you can take just an absolute monster in Trenton Simpson. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then at pick 28, you have the Chiefs. And I think this is a very interesting pick um, because, again, I think running back is in play, even though Pacheco has served admirable, admirably. Um, there's just really no edges I think are worth taking. Actually, no, that's, that's a lie. I think we're going to take Nolan Smith here. forgot he was on the board. Or you could go BJ Ojolari, who I think is – oh, almost clicked him. Uh, very explosive athlete, but – and his brother uh, Aziz is – taking that leap on the Giants. Um, I think that Nolan Smith is moving up draft boards for the for all the right reasons. So we're going to go ahead and take Nolan Smith. And then at pick 29, we have the Vikings. Clark Phillips is definitely in, pe in play, um, as as well as BJ Ojolari or Felix uh, Uzoma and, Duke, and DK and DK Uzoma. And BJ Ojolari. But we're going to go ahead and take uh, Clark Phillips. This second, this defense is bad, man. Like, it is so bad. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take Clark Phillips. It's pretty good corner class. Um, so I think that the Vikings' next step is to round out their defense. I think their offense is fine. Um, especially with Justin Jefferson there and Adam Thielen and et cetera, et cetera. You definitely can make the case to go Josh Downs and give Kirk Cousins another weapon. Or um, Zay Flowers. I know a lot of people are high on Zay Flowers. I'm particularly not at the moment, but um, Bills at pick 30, I really think you have to take Jameer Gibbs just to, for Josh Allen's sake, like you can't keep running him like this, he's gonna die um, or you could take Osiris Torrance who's probably the best card prospect in the draft, someone I'm very high on I really like Osiris Torrance, he definitely could have went to Washington um, and he's definitely a fine fit here for the Bills, who desperately need interior O-line help um, I just think if you add Jameer Gibbs, it adds another wrinkle to this offense, being that you have the pass catching back in James Cook, and you have um, now you have a bruiser back in Jameer Gibbs. I think you, like it's just a fine pick. And then at pick 31, you got the Eagles. Very interesting pick at this point with how the board is shaken out. I do like the idea of taking Osiris Torrance's depth um, because the Eagles roster is so loaded. And with corners here... I think the only one I actually like is Devin Witherspoon. He made he was pretty high on Mel Kuyper's big board. Um, and you have Darius Slay getting up there in age, like I mentioned, and you have uh, James Bradbury, who will be a free agent next year. So you definitely could take Witherspoon. I don't think it's a bad pick at all. Um, I think that at this point, though, Osiris Torrance is the better prospect, and you definitely make the argument of just take the best player available. Um, but I think we're, I don't know if this is a mistake, but we're going to draft for need. And we're going to take Devin Witherspoon, who's someone who definitely is moving up draft boards. We're going to, he's going to be an interesting, it's going to be interesting to see how he tests. Um, and then at pick 32, we have the Texans again. This is the first pick of the second round because of the uh, Dolphins forfeiting their pick for trying to get Tom Brady and replace Tua Tagovailoa for like the 18th time. Um, but... We're going to go ahead and take, uh, hmm. We're going to take BJ Ojolari or Gervin Dexter here, I think. And I don't know, man. Kenyon Green has played bad. And I think that's expected because most guards do play bad in their first year, unless they're like Quentin Nelson or something. Um, you could definitely take Osiris Torrance, and I hate having him fall out of the first round, honestly. Uh, But we're going to go ahead and take uh, B.J. Ojolari. I think he's just such an explosive athlete, such a good athlete that um, it's going to be interesting. I think he would have a role right away in the Texans' defense. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this mock draft. This is the first mock draft of the year. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If I 
did something you really like, let me know. If I did something you really hate, let me know. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Um, this is just for me to talk about football with people and learn more about each franchise. Um, happy to talk. Happy to answer questions. But uh, that's going to do it for me. That's going to do it for this video. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.